Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the horror movie that Blumhouse released this weekend called Imaginary. Let's talk about it. Imaginary Review. Review. Okay, so right off the bat, I do want to go ahead and issue a spoiler warning. I'm going to be talking about this movie, and there are some plot twists that happen in this movie that I feel like if they get spoiled for you, it might potentially ruin the film for you. So if you have not seen this movie, you might want to click off of this video and maybe watch it later. But that being said, we're going to dive right into this. So um, this movie was a horror movie. I've seen a lot of reviews online saying that this movie is very underwhelming. It's a very disappointing movie. And um, overall, I went into this movie with very low expectations because, like I said, a lot of people have said that this movie isn't very good. And I want to go ahead and start off by saying... I thought this movie was pretty solid. Um, the last two horror movies that I've seen were the Five Nights at Freddy's movie and the Night Swim movie, and I think that this movie is miles better than both of those two movies. I do think that this movie does start off incredibly, incredibly slowly, and um, we get introduced to the characters relatively quickly early on. Um, this movie starts off with a nightmare sequence, which is very interesting. It is one of the more scarier parts of the movie, but that being said, um, we very quickly get introduced to this family dynamic. There's a stepmother with her two kids and then the father um, who's a struggling musician. And um, we just basically get introduced to this family where I do think that each of the characters are kind of um, very unlikable, which I will say does kind of help filter into why I feel like a lot of people probably strongly dislike this movie. Um, the stepmother character overshares a lot and tells these kids a lot of things that I feel like she shouldn't be telling these kids. Um, she basically forces them to move out of the apartment that they're living in at the beginning of the movie. There's a lot of weird stuff with the family dynamic in the earlier parts of the movie. And um, overall, like I said, none of these characters are very likable. I feel like the little girl um, is really bratty and annoying. The teenage daughter is very much all of the tropes that you'd expect from a teenage daughter where she just like absolutely can't stand anybody and she hates her stepmother for literally no reason and um pretty much the only likable character in the first half of the movie is the father and then like i said he's a musician so he goes away and he goes on tour so the first 30 minutes of this movie i will admit are very slow um there's not a lot of things going on here that are very interesting and actually really entertaining to watch and um it takes a while before this movie starts picking up and starts getting good, but eventually we finally get to the point where the little girl, she uh, meets Chauncey for the first time. She goes playing hide and seek with her uh, stepmom. Stepmom steps outside for a little bit and um, the little girl goes down into the basement looking for her because they're supposed to be playing hide and seek and instead finds Chauncey and then starts playing games with Chauncey and um, if you've seen the trailers it's pretty much everything from the trailers they uh, go around doing a little uh, scavenger hunt she has a bunch of things that she needs to do and check off her list and then uh, that allows her to open up some mystery door into another imaginary realm essentially down in the basement very interesting concept and overall I think that a lot of it works for me um, and I do think that once we get to the point where the kid starts hanging out with this imaginary friend a little bit more and um, the teenage sister starts kind of like branching out and trying to get more comfortable with her new home and stuff like that. There are some mo moments that I really liked. Um, for one, the teenage sister gets kind of like a guy love interest who's just like the guy next door. He's really ridiculous, over the top, absolutely hilarious. Um, first thing he does when he introduces himself to her is explain that, you know, he can show her to bars downtown that don't check IDs. And then um, he immediately tries doing drugs with her. So really over the top ridiculous. I don't know why, but I found it really funny. So I definitely enjoyed that aspect of the movie, and especially because, um, what's it called? The stepmom has to go do something for a little bit. And the older sister is asked to watch the younger sister. And um, in that time, the older sister's like, okay, I'm gonna invite this guy over. And he just is so terrible immediately. And for the first like, five minutes that we see of him he's just really really bad and then he immediately goes upstairs and then Chauncey does a lot of terrifying shit to him and he probably leaves that house very traumatized and it is so funny to me because he's a dick almost the entire time that we meet him and then he's the first victim of this uh little stuffed teddy bear that being said nothing happens to him he ends up being fine he ends up leaving um but I think that that part early on in the movie worked really well for me and uh, I think that it was a good way to kind of set up some of the more scary aspects of it. And uh, I will say this movie does feel kind of cheap with how little they use some of the visual effects and how little they actually show Chauncey in his like actually more scary form. But um, I feel like overall it works because 
even though it's not fully set up in this movie that he's more powerful whenever they get into the imaginary realm um it makes a lot more sense you see him a lot more when they're in the imaginary realm and before then um he's just kind of showing up as this little teddy bear which i'm gonna say this this is the first one of the plot twist and it worked insanely well for me um chauncey is an imaginary friend obviously so he doesn't actually exist so the stuffed bear the little teddy bear that we see in all of the trailers and all the promo footage and stuff like that never actually is like physically there in the movie but since we're seeing things from the mother's point of view we're always seeing the bear the little girl can see the bear obviously because it's her imaginary friend but eventually they get to a point where they bring in a therapist to talk to the daughter and um the daughter sits down has a conversation with the therapist they're filming it or whatever and uh, it gets revealed later in the scene that the stuffed bear is not actually there. It's a figment of imagination. And Jessica, the stepmother, is also seeing the same bear. So they're both imagining it. And um, they kind of do this like really interesting reveal where they go back and they show some of the scenes from earlier in the movie. But all of a sudden, there's no bear there. The bear was never there. And um, when they did that twist, it worked really well for me. It actually shocked me. And I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and I really like the fact that they kind of like eased into that and it's not something that they immediately jumped out and chose to do. Um, but that being said, there are a lot of moments in this movie that leading up to that, that do kind of feel unnecessary until that reveal happens. Like almost any time the mother sees the little kid playing with her stuffed animal, she's, she just randomly like takes out her phone immediately and starts taking pictures and videos of that, that doll. And, uh, it, I said that doll, I meant that stuffed animal. And, uh, it seems really weird, but then later when we have this montage where she's going through her old photos and she realizes that the bear is not in any of them, that's kind of a cool moment. But, like, in the earlier scenes, it feels so necessary. Like, why is she doing that? And I know some people could be like, oh, well, she's just trying to make memories with the kid or whatever. But I'm like, it feels so out of place. Like, I, I understand that a lot of movies nowadays are going to try to use people actually using their phones a little bit more because... In modern day society, everybody uses their phones for everything, and it's a smarter thing for a character to use their phones. But um, in this one, it just it just felt so out of place. Every single time the stepmother took her phone out to do something, it just felt wrong to me. Which I I know that that's like such a nitpicky thing, but it really bothered me a lot. Um, and while I'm talking about nitpicks, something else that really bothered me. There's an old lady character who's like the girl who lives in their neighborhood or whatever. She used to babysit Jessica and um. There's a little bit of an interesting story with her. She ended up devoting her entire life to kind of researching these imaginary friends and the scientifical terms that she gives them to like deities that uh, are more nurtured towards children and they try to, you know, eat and uh, what's it called? Not eat. What's the word? They kind of like fuel themselves using the kids imagination powers or whatever. And um, that entire character is literally just exposition. And it really drives me insane because she did not need to be in the movie at all. She's in the movie for about 10 minutes. And every single time she's on screen, it could have been replaced with literally anything else. Like, for one, all of her exposition lines probably could have been given to the therapist who's already talking to the mother about these imaginary friends and why kids have these special ties to imaginary friends. But um, there's that. And then later, the, um, what's it called? Old lady ends up joining the sister and the mother on their little adventure to go find... The child um that's lost in the imaginary world and uh she ends up just like becoming a giant bitch being super psychotic and like doing stuff to like trap them in the imaginary world and then she immediately dies and i feel like everything about her character made no fucking sense did not need to be in the movie very um over the top character and uh, just everything about her i'm like you could have just had these things be things that happened on accident because like some of the small stuff is like oh the door closed and now they're trapped in there she did not need to grab a pair of scissors to make sure that, you know, that door closed. Like, that door could have just closed on its own. Um, that's a very nitpicky thing. It did kind of bother me. But, um, now, into this little imaginary realm, uh, I feel like a lot of the stuff that they did in this imaginary realm and here on out worked insanely well for me. For one, I think that we finally get some moments between the stepmother and the older stepdaughter that actually are decent. Like they actually seem like a family. They're finally getting along. They have some moments where they have some heart to hearts and they basically are like, by the way, I think you're a bitch and you really need to take responsibility for your actions because you are the reason why we're in this mess in the first place and stuff like that. And uh, they, have, they have some good dialogue there. They have some good back and forth that I think works relatively well. And um, throughout this story, there's a lot of good moments with um, them going to save each other and helping each other out because 
they're terrified and they don't know what to do and they are looking for this their sister or daughter for the stepmother and um they're both terrified and um i really really like everything that they do with them trying to go through this little hall of infinite doors and everything and uh it was cool i liked it um i think that a lot of the visual effects and everything worked relatively well for me and uh, like i said the overarching story was pretty decent to me i think uh it starts off slow there's a lot of moments here and there that are like kind of feel unnecessary but um the last 30 minutes i think were great they do kind of a fake out sequence where they're like you think that everything's done but it turns out this is all just jessica's imagination and she's still stuck in the imagination world or whatever that was a cool reveal i liked what they did with that i feel like they should have played it out a little bit longer and it probably would have been a little bit scarier when she came to that realization of oh shit i'm still in here um but other than that i think it worked pretty well and uh i i'm not gonna say necessarily that i think this movie is great but i definitely think it's not bad and a lot of people online are saying it's pretty bad but uh yeah that being said, uh, if I had to give this movie a rating, uh, I'm going to give it a probably a solid 62 out of 100. Like I said, not terrible, not great. There's definitely a lot of moments that could have been heavily improved. But overall, I think that they do a really good job of like hiding silhouettes in the background of certain scenes. And they do a really good job of making you kind of feel like you're being watched by this ominous presence the entire time they're in this house. And uh, I really liked a lot of the moments that they had in this movie. So overall, like I said, 62 out of 100. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave this video here. Thank you guys so much for coming by and checking it out. I love and appreciate you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bow. 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 Back at it again, but that's irrelevant. Flow so smooth. They calling me Mr. Elegant. Like an elephant. I got a long nose. Like a president. I've got a few hoes. Swift with a stutter. I'm smooth like butter. Don't see it coming when I slip undercover. Like a big dog, but I don't bite. I'm still a big broad. I'd win that fight. Come match you and I knock out your l l lights. <laughs>